Hello and welcome back to the Paleocast Gaming Network and today we're going to look at Fossil Hunters. This is a game I've been meaning to get around to for a really long time and I figured it's been a while since we just jumped into something completely blind. Uh, so yeah, we're going to give you some first impressions of this game today. Personally, I've never been a fan of the word, or the, you know, the name Fossil Hunter. It's, you know, it's something I've been called a few times in the past by sort of members of the public and I always find it really weird. I can't quite explain why i think i think it kind of evokes the same sort of vibe as like tomb raider you know it's quite a aggressive title for essentially what we do and right out of the gate i love the character design in this game in the vast majority of the games we've looked at uh you know where you play as a paleontologist or you meet a paleontologist you know your options are pretty limited to just macho white guys in fedoras with big Darwinian beards. Um, I really like that we've got characters of different genders, different ethnicities, different shapes and sizes. It's really good stuff. And oh my god, you can customize them so much. I'm gonna go for, I think that's... Mm, yeah, I like that look. <laughs> I can't quite explain why. So you're the new fossil hunter. That's great. Welcome to the dig site. You can call me the collector. The last team left a pile of dirt and fossils just lying all over the place. Why don't you get started by clearing out those dirt blocks? Okay. Seems pretty simple. Oh, okay. So I guess we've got to keep digging through this sort of loose sand. Can we move this box out of the way? Ah, okay. I like games where you can feel that like you properly interact with the world. Oh, how did I not see that? Okay, so this looks like we've got the tip of a tail. Definitely some vertebrae in there. Are they expecting us just to connect this to this? Hang on, I just... Uh, oh no. Hang on. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> there we go. That is a... That's a splendid creature, that is. Can we submit that? Oh. Okay. Hey, look at you. Assembling skeletons. I'll give you cash for any specimens you send my way. Ah, oh, I was doing so well. I think, you know, that's kind of a shame. That's an extremely common trope that we're seeing in a lot of these games that are, you know, selling the fossils that you find. When fossils are extracted, like, purely for profit, they usually end up in private collections, which is what it sounds like is going on here. And, you know, when that happens, they can't be worked on anymore. And it also encourages people to, you know, strip mine fossil-rich environments to find sellable fossils, which is also a massive problem. One more thing before you go into the cave. I've got clients who want specific skeletons. Beautiful skeletons. And you're the only, I mean, my favorite fossil hunter. Why don't you start by making me a two-headed beast? Huh. So I guess what we're kind of doing is making like um, chimeras, right? So in Greek mythology, a chimera is a creature that's made up of many other different creatures. I assume we sort of have to put the pieces onto this? Oh, oh no. Well, that was embarrassing. What did I just do there? Oh, you can brush them. Okay, that's cool. So, what was I saying? Yeah, chimera. So in Greek mythology, a chimera is a creature that's Frankenstein together of lots of other different animals. In paleontology, a chimera is a fossil that's been proposed as a new species, but is actually just lots of different fossils stuck together for, well, it's either a, you know, a hoax that's been done on purpose, or it's by accident, which happens more often than you'd think. But I think here we're pretty obviously deliberately assembling these fossils slightly wrong. And that's a really interesting premise for a game. So yeah, like, you know, some mistakes can happen, despite what films like Jurassic Park will have you believe, you know, you very rarely find a dinosaur fossil or whatever fossil it may be in perfect articulation, sort of nicely posed for you. That's extremely rare. Most of the time, you're finding little bits of them scattered around like like we are now, I guess. So if we assemble this, what's going to happen? Can we just dust that off? Oh god, I wish there was an easier way to do this, like. Maybe if I... Nope, nope. I figured it out. Hold on. There we go. That makes a lot more sense. I was going to say there must have been an easier way. That was definitely my fault. 
what was I saying? Yeah, so as this game is showing us, you know, we find the fossils scattered around in lots of little bits because after they die, scavengers will move the bits around or if an animal dies in, say, a riverbed, when the river flows, the pieces can be rearranged. And so you often end up with, you know, a big lump of different animals together. I'm wondering what's going to happen if I keep going into this. I'm scared there's going to be some kind of... Oh, God. Oh. Okay. So I guess there's a limit. Okay, so we're not going to find anything there. That's fine. So really famous example of this happening. Um, in 2015, when Dakota Raptor was first described, I'm sure some of you may already know this, you know, Dakota Raptor, it's a big flappy dromaeosaur dinosaur. When the authors first assembled its remains and published them, what they described as the furcula, which is like the, you know, the wishbone on your Christmas or Thanksgiving turkey, it was actually a piece of a turtle. <laughs> which is not a part of a Dakota Raptor. And they had to amend the paper after someone pointed it out. And that's just so funny. It's kind of embarrassing at the same time. Oh, we're getting a lot more pieces here. Let's try and see if we can make this uh, two-headed specimen that they want for some reason. But sometimes, you know, that was a mistake. Sometimes you do get people deliberately making fakes, which is what we're doing right here. So for example, one of the most famous ones, I actually got to see it a few years ago in, uh, in Nottingham. It's called Archaeoraptor, and they basically presented it as this, you know, ultimate missing link between birds and dinosaurs. And, it, you know, it was basically just a Microraptor with some other fossil bird bits stuck to it. And yeah, it was a massive controversy at the time. So, I, I find this a really interesting thing for a game. I just hope that the game communicates that, you know, we are being kind of manipulated to do this. Um... Oh. You know, I hope players don't come away thinking that this is what paleontologists do. You know, we don't just go somewhere, go underground, find um, find bits of animals and just stick them together however we like and invent a new animal. So yeah, let's see if we can find ourselves another head. We've got lots of vertebra. Because obviously, you know, having two heads is a real thing that some animals do have, like it's a mutation that we've seen in living animals. But it's insanely rare. So, you know, surely in the millions upon millions of years of prehistory it will have happened but the chances of it happening and coinciding with uh, a creature being fossilized it's just uh, the the ch well, i'm sure math the mathematical figure for the chances of that is insane though i think there is one i definitely oh oh so these are the different rock types wait can we dig through hang on a second can we dig through these as well? We can. Okay, that changes everything. I'm pretty sure there's a lizard from China. I think it's Cretaceous in age. And I think it's like a juvenile. And that's a really important thing as well, right? So, you know, creatures with this condition, these multiple heads, don't tend to survive very long for obvious reasons. Um, so I guess that makes it even more rare that you'd get a fossil because, you know, not only are the chances of being fossilized already so slim. You've got to have two heads, be a juvenile, which, by the way, juvenile bones tend to break really easily. They're very little, very fragile. So if anyone ever does present a, an adult, say, dinosaur or whatever with two heads, you should be extremely dubious of that because I sure as hell would be. Oh God, flee. Can these pieces have fossils in them? <gasps> they can. Okay, so that's kind of how you reset the stage, I guess. Oh my god, look at all these pieces we've got. This is amazing. But there's still no head. I guess they make the head slightly rarer, which is true in real life. Finding a head is <laughs> extremely rare. Oh my god. We're about to make the longest boy there ever was. Oh heck. I completely missed this. Oh, I see. Okay, so that's what we've got to make. Yes! Okay, here we go. <laughs> Let's make our two-headed monster. How do we want to do this? Should we just put like a head at either end? Because I think that's the only way we can do it. There's no like... <laughs> What's the word I'm thinking of? Junction? If we're gonna fake this, we're gonna go big, okay? Normally you wouldn't really do this bit at the dig site, but I think given the <laughs> nature of what we're doing, it makes sense. Do we have a straight bit? Uh. 
No, they're all bendy bits. Ideally, I want the two heads to be at the front. That's what I'm kind of going for. Hang on. I'm getting so lost. <laughs> this is so weird. Okay. Uh, we want this bit to go like this. Yeah, this is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> I have no idea how this creature would have lived. And I kind of hate it. It's going to be perfect. Oh, what? <laughs> Hang on. Let's squeeze that in there. And then finally, this is the perfect animal. Bam! Okay. Amazing. Come see me in the lab after getting two heads. Okay. Um, sure, I think everything will stay here, right? I can't imagine them being that cruel. Hello! Two heads, how delightfully odd. They're going to love it. I think his character's voice has changed every single time I do it. I'm so sorry. Got another job for you. I don't have an answer for that. Is there something else I can help with? Uh, what? <laughs> Long skeletons are super in right now. Long boys. Get me a skeleton with at least five spine pieces. To be fair, I think our last one also had five spine pieces. Doesn't matter what the rest of it is, so long as it's got five spines. Long boys are in right now. Huh. That's actually like a perfect segue back to what I was saying earlier. The sort of thesis of this video that's kind of happening, I guess. You know, there is a lot of pressure put on paleontologists. Um, you know, if you want to publish in a big journal like Nature or something, you need to find a fossil that's novel and unique and weird, or in this case, long. There's this constant push to find the newest, bestest thing, the biggest dinosaur or the oldest invertebrate or the most complete ecosystem or whatever it may be. And what people are now finding is that that pressure is what leads people a lot of the time to engage in this really unethical behaviour that we've been seeing lately. An article about this research that some friends have been doing lately literally came out like one or two weeks ago. I'll link it in the description. It's really, really good. And basically what they found was that you know, these journals kind of demand novelty and weird things. Like like that two-headed lizard we mentioned earlier, or our hypothetical two-headed monstrosity that we created. If you were to publish, if you were to publish something like that, that would be you set forever. You know, you'd get all this media attention, you'd get to make documentaries about it, and that would help you get funding and other jobs down the line. So obviously people are gonna transgress these laws. Say for instance, this two-headed monster is found in say, uh, Brazil, or it's been preserved in amber in Myanmar or something like that. You know, people are gonna transgress those laws to access those specimens, and they're gonna skip over the legality and the ethics of these discoveries, there we go, to get them published. So yeah, really interesting themes going on in this game, and I really want to know, is this actually going to be part of the game's backstory? You know, is this actually the, the intention of the writing? Or am I completely misinterpreting what's going on right here? Okay, we've left a lot of stuff down here, but I think I'd rather move on to the next section. I don't think... I mean, I wonder if we can... Can we bring things down with us? Like if we move these into the elevator, could we use these to help make our our long boy? Hmm. Hang on. I think I think we can. Okay, I'm gonna get a, a bunch of these uh, spines then, real quick. Uh, I get, by the way, that this is an extremely silly game, and to use it to talk about such a serious topic is a little strange. But, you know, maybe some of you haven't, you know, aren't aware of this stuff. That's my my hope anyway. So, so you know, I hope you find it interesting. But if you were just hoping for me to sort of struggle <laughs> moving these bones around, I do apologize. I think we can fit just one more. Are we good? Oh, no. <laughs> of course. Let's try and move these back a bit. There we go. Okay, let's get to work. Oh, perfect. Already. Ooh, we've got like a pelvis sort of going on. Or maybe, maybe that's a limb? Not 100% sure. To go back to what I was saying about uh, chimeras earlier, I'm actually, I'm actually trying to solve a bit of a chimera right now with the uh, museum that I work with. Um, 
don't know how much of it I can really talk about, but we basically got this specimen uh, that's got a head, it's got a body, and we don't quite know if the head belongs to the body or not, and we're trying to figure it out. So obviously we're trying to work out if they both belong to the same species, which is generally quite easy if both species are well described and well known, but obviously if, you know, they're new species, that's really difficult. And if you're not used to the anatomy, you know, no one in paleontology knows everything. So I'm not surprised that people who work on dinosaurs didn't recognize a bit of turtle. That makes perfect sense. We're also analyzing the sediment to see if they match, because we actually don't know if they were found alongside each other or not. And that's, again, useful for us, but in the case of Dakota Raptor, that wouldn't have helped because they found them together. The sediment would have matched anyway. Ultimately, the best way to stand up to scrutiny, if people, you know, if you want to convince people that your specimens are real, well, you got to just take notes. You got to photograph where the fossils are found and really clearly map everything out. You know, the opposite of what we're doing here, to be honest. If this was a real dig site, we would be recording the location of every single discovery. Whoa. You know, we'd be logging with the different layers we were finding things. We certainly would not allow these elements that were taken from several floors above us down to here. That would definitely not happen. And then when the paper was, you know, reviewed and read by the public or other scientists, they'd be able to tell, oh, they did their due diligence, they know what they're doing. And that's honestly the problem with the whole fossil hunter mindset. You know, if you are digging for fossils purely with the intention to sell them, of course you're not going to log all the information, all that detail is going to be lost because all you're doing is finding that precious T-Rex skull that you can sell for millions of dollars. A proper researcher wants to know how that animal died, how it lived, what the environment was like that it died in, uh, the plants and animals that maybe were found alongside of it, but obviously if you're purely in it for profit you're just going to dig straight past them. I wonder if you find the rarer elements in the harder rock. That'd be interesting. All right, I'm gonna see if I can find the key before I start assembling these bits together. Suppose we are taking notes in our little journal. You know, we've made a few sort of observations about the different rock types, I suppose. Actually, I think if I were to make a game about, um, you know, paleontology, I think I would use the field notebook as like a major story element because it's such an important part of it. Uh, geologists or a paleontologist to work. Oh my god, we're finding so many of these now. So I see how these work now. Put that there. there we go. I'm gonna grab these feet as well, real quick. And there we go. Let's make this long boy. Okay, five spines, they said. I haven't quite figured out how the. Actually, is that. That doesn't count as a spine, does it? even though it does have a spine in it. I think we can try and do something. So that's like the tail. And we'll have a limb here. And then let's oh, put this here. Give it a bendy bit, and then we'll put a straight bit on so that we've definitely got five, because I don't know if it counts the tail as a spine as well. Right, here we go. I'm just really curious to see what the next uh, request is. Amazing! Not bad, I mean, that one was pretty long. I've got a client asking for something with four claws. Now I know that you now I know what you're thinking. That's four claws too many. But the customer's always right, you know? So yeah, I'm really curious to see where this is going. Um I think this would probably be the perfect game to live stream. So we'll try and organize something like that, I think, if you're up for that. Let us know in the comments. Okay, just gonna ignore that. Um, okay, we'll find out what that thing is next time. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you then. Come here. Oh no!